so the last lecture we saw some of the very basic problems uh, and we also realized at the end of the lecture that those problems can be solved almost mentally or by the concept of system so now today we are going to take some different variety of question and this will invoke some concept from what you have learned so far this is the first question yes Pardon? See, you, have to, you, have to, you have to stop the background noise before you ask something because I cannot hear you whatever you are saying. Okay, you have doubts from AC Verma. Yeah, tell me. So can I send you a question? You can ask those doubts in tutorial. If it is not getting solved in tutorial, then you can ask me. Okay. So now, this is a unique question in which uh, we hang a mass on one side. And on the other side, we are not hanging any mass. We are directly applying a force F. Of force, the person who applies the force, the agent, is directly holding the rope. Now, when you directly hold the rope, when the force is applied to the rope directly, then you can imagine a small portion of the string. And then you can say that the tension developed must be equal to the applied force. Now, when you hang a block of some mass M, gravity will apply force on the block, not on the string. Now, this is a very common confusion that uh, if we apply force F, then is the tension equals to F or is the tension equals to mg? The answer is T is always equals to F, not mg. It may be equals to mg depending on situation if the block is at rest, it may be. So now here we are seeing two things. One is on one side, a direct force is applied on the string. On the other side, On the other side, we have a block of mass M. And now therefore, what we can do next? So we know that T is equal to F and F is a given quantity. We can just solve for the acceleration. So for the block, if Mg exceeds the value of T, it will go down with some acceleration. And if T exceeds the value of Mg, it will go up with an acceleration. And if T, is equals to mg then it will remain at rest so we can write in many ways so let's say if, we, if it is going down with axis a or what we can do is we can take some situation or some cases if i say if block accelerates downward so if the block is accelerating downward it means the gravity exceeds the tension so we can add this mg minus t equals to ma and what we know already is that f is equal to t so we have two equations mg minus t equals to ma and f equals to t and therefore, you can substitute the value, you can say mg. 
minus f equals to m and so you can write a equals to mg minus f by m. So similarly you can take the case two. If block accelerates हेलो सर ओ सॉरी माय माइक वाज म्यूट सर नाउ योर वॉइस इज कमिंग बिफोर दैट इट वाजंट कमिंग या या एक्चुअली आई मीन इट वाज म्यूट एक्चुअली सॉरी सो ओके व्हाट आई एम सेइंग इज दैट लेट्स से वी हैव टू ब्लॉक ऑफ मास m1 एंड m2 नाउ 
our endeavor is to find the internal forces so we know that what is internal force it is a force acting within the system so now i create a system called m1 and m2 so now the connecting string between the m1 and m2 will develop some tension and we can call that tension as the internal tension or internal force the reason is obvious because our system is m1 and m2 so now the internal force is obvious we can see it. and now we know how to calculate because we know how to write the laws of motion now there are situation when this will not be obvious to you like you won't be able to see it just like you are seeing right now and in such scenario we are supposed to find the internal force so what kind of question i am talking about exactly so this is a question so what we do is we have a maybe some sort of a rope let's say we have a thick rope so we have a thick rope and you can see there is no end to this rope so now the mass of the rope is let's say and the length is l and you apply some force at one end so the agent is working here now what we generally do not realize that a thick rope you can imagine that if the length of this string if i shrink it to zero then you won't be able to see m1 m2 separated right so m1 m2 will look like one thing one block similarly you can imagine this rope as a collection of very many blocks you can think that this is collection of blocks and every block is pulling the block behind it so imagine if some sort of question comes here like if i cut at some random location called x now the question to you is what is the tension developed at this cross section which is x distance away from the end at which the force is applied now if i'm asking what is the tension developed at this distance from the one end what is the tension here then definitely what i'm asking is called the internal force so the question is how to solve the question like this so the answer is obvious like we we know things we know how to solve questions like this so the only step which you need to add is just separate the two parts as two blocks just separate the two parts as two blocks so you cut from here and then draw the ability of each part separately so what we are going to do next is like we are going to just draw one block up to here which is for this much length and another block like this which matches the other end. and now your job is almost done so this is length by the x so what is the length of uh, the remaining part l minus x and because m is the mass given for the entire system so i think by using the unitary method you can find the mass of each ma uh, each part is this so what is the mass of this let me call this m2 and m1 so what is m1 basically what we can say or what we can write so you can use the unitary method because the rope is uniform so mass must be proportional to length so what a mass we can expect here come on tell me m is the mass of length l so if l length is equivalent of m mass then what is the mass of l minus x length what is the mass of x length is it difficult no sir sir solve it
तो m into l minus x upon l. So it's m by l for the mass per unit length into the length. That's it. And this is m by l into x. Now sometimes mass per unit length we call as a symbol lambda in calculation. So this is a very nice way of writing. So you write lambda and then eventually you can multiply the answer or substitute the lambda at the end of the calculation. Okay. So, so m1 is lambda, l1 is lambda, l1 is lambda. Now you can see that we have mass, we have force. Now, if the agent will pull the first mass or m2 mass, what will happen to m1? So who will pull the who will who will pull the M1? It is the internal force that you pull, right? So what we need to realize that some internal force, let's call it tension, is developing, which is pulling the rope behind it, but the same tension is also pulling this rope also, the Newton's third law. So your question is how to find the T. So now, because I have converted this problem into two block problem, can you solve to get the T? Yes, sir. Go ahead. So the acceleration would be form. So and um, once again, no, so answer must be in terms of the here M1 and T is not there. So you have to add in terms of M and L and X. The answer must be in terms of lift. T is not much. So T is no, that's the one second, it's the last time.
사랑은 없어도 쉽나? 일문제 F by lambda. Yeah, so that is not required. But in A is A by M, that's it. Because the accessing is, we can find from that from the first expression. If we look at the entire rope, the net force is F, the net mass is M, so A must be A by M. Yes. Yeah. In fact, you can find the answer directly. So there is no need to solve the two questions. Sir, I was applied okay, that out. The net force upon total mass. Now, the good thing is the accession of every mass will be same. So whether I divide this into two parts or three parts or ten parts, the accession is going to be same, right? So A will not change. So A for this and A for this is same, isn't it? So now if you add the laws of motion for any one of the parts, you will get done. So you can add as T equals to M1, A, that's it. What is M1? So T, sorry, I have to put it in T1. So T turns out to how much? F into L minus X by L. Or you can say F into 1 minus X by L. So as X will change, the tension will change. And you can also realize that if X is exactly equals to L, if x is equal to L, the tension becomes zero. It means at the free end, no tension will exist. So when you apply the force at one end and the other end is free end, this is called the free end. So force will reduce from F to zero when you reach here. And the reason is obvious because this end will not pull anything else. Understood? Is this clear to all of you? Yes, sir. So let's do this question. So it is based on the same theory, but uh, you need to think about uh, the same on your own. And this I put under the category called the chain problems, which are very famous part of laws of motion. Imagine if I create a smooth frictionless table. And from this smooth table, we hang some chain. And this is x, x is the hanging length, and the L minus x is the, the part on the table. So we have to find the acceleration of the system at this instant. Find A. Now you can try about this question. Then I'll show. So is there a mass for the parts?
Gördünüzdü? You just need to cut it from here and then do the ability of separate mass. And then you can start. So T by M. But don't tell answer. T by M. We have better tension than you. We don't tension it. So definitely we have to solve the answer without the tension. So GX by so GX how much? By how much once again? GX by L. GX by L. Yeah, I think this is the right one. I think this is the right answer. Anybody else getting the same answer? Yeah, sir. I got the same answer. Now again, if you go back to the the last uh, slide of the lecture, the last lecture in which I talked about the system. So in the system, I explained that if every part of the system is moving with the same magnitude of acceleration in the same sense, we can we can directly solve the question by writing. So for the chain problem, there is something very interesting way of writing. So we call it. What we call is called the driving force because acceleration is defined as force upon mass, but we make it slightly more sophisticated in terms of writing. So we write driving force upon driven mass. Now try to realize the two terms in every motion there is some force which drives the motion right which creates the motion so what we need to look for is called the driving force and if you look carefully you can get it directly it's the hanging part is the responsible part for the motion to take place so it is the hanging part which is under the gravity And this part will be pulling the entire system because every part which is on the table cannot create the motion because their weight and their normal will balance out each other. So that's not the issue. So what we can see clearly, the driving force turns out to be how much? Can you tell me the driving force here? So it is the weight of the hanging part. Thank <laughs> you. 
now the meaning of driven mass means what all are moving so the mass which is in motion so motion means in the sense of motion that it can move and therefore if you just apply the idea of this uh, weight i mean the driving force upon driven mass you can see that the driving force is mx g by l and the mass to be driven is the entire mass so this right is m okay and therefore this will give you the answer gx by l so even without drawing the abd of a separate part we can solve this question but nevertheless we can always do the same thing which i said you can always create two separate objects by cutting at the at the point which is logical and i can say the upper mass has a block of uh, some mass m1 where m1 is definitely m by l into l minus x and you can imagine this attached to some string and then comes the hanging mass you can call m2 and you can imagine as m by l into gx and we know how to add guns so the accession was if you remember <laughs> the m2 g by m1 m1 is simply m the total mass So it turns out to be same as. So now we have acceleration as a function of x. So now we can, in fact, go back to the kinematics, and we can solve this question further. Dv by dx is equal to gx now, and then integrate both. A is a function of x. So what we can write a. Proceed further. A is a function of x, not time. So, do we have some oh, relation oh. in which? Yes, sir. Okay. What is what is that? So, can we do it? So, question number no, one. First, listen to question. The question is: If the same chain was initially completely on the table. it is slightly pulled so you just take one link of the chain and you pull it somewhere here and you release so the first link will drive the rest of the link further so not that's not an issue so the only job you have to do is just pull a slightly off the table so the question is like this if the chain is initially on the table one end of the chain is slightly pulled off the table and released initially chain was on the table then one end of it is slightly pull off the table and released find its speed when it completely leaves the table okay, do this now Uh, sir, I got the answer for that uh, velocity as function of x. I have. Yeah, so you can, you can just put the limit in the answer. So sir, how the x value? Yeah, I tell me. Sir, I got v minus cu is equal to gx square by 2l. V minus u equals to gx square by 2i. 2l. 2l, okay. Uh, something is wrong. Can you just check it out once again?
look at this so you I'm have the me. equation yeah. okay oh, go, go ahead Oh, sir, is v is equal to x root under g by l. Yeah, correct. That's the right answer. So first I did that mistake that I took oh, dt is equal to dx. Yeah, so the v, we, we, you know, a is, now we have derived the first part and we know that how to use the kinematics of the as the d v d by dx. And now it's a basic indication. So you rearrange the terms. You integrate when x is zero, when you just started the <laughs> motion. So it was released from this. So we can say zero. This is x, you can say v. So v square by two minus zero will give you x square by two minus zero. Fortunately, we don't have the beginning initial term non-zero. So v square turns out to be g x square. <clears throat> by L. So V is definitely under root of G by L into X. Now, what, what I was asking is the velocity when you completely leave the tail, which means when X is L actually. At that instant, V turns out to be under root of GL. Because if you write X L and take it inside, it becomes root G. This is your answer. Okay. Now there is a second variety of question, which is again uh, most challenging one. In the chain problem. Hello, sir, sir. Why did you integrate it? Why I integrate? Because I want uh, the value of v at instant when x value has grown to x value. Like the hanging part was zero initially. So once you pull the one end and release, it will start falling down. So X will grow with time, right? So we want to know that what will happen as X will grow? What will be the effect on the speed? So we know the, I mean, the differential equation as we call it, differential equation. So A is G X Y L. So we can write as V D by D X to G X Y L. Then we separate the variable on one side of one nature. So all of V will be on one side, all X will be on one side. And now you integrate to add up the effect of gravity over the length X. So V, that's why we integrate. Now this is a very unique problem in which we have a step or the staircase you can think of. And now we have a chain. So now the chain is hanging. The, the size of the step, this particular point, This is fixed, we call it H, the height. This is H. Oh. 
the net mass is m the length is l the full length and now the system is released from rest now the assumption that we need to make is that after some time if i just read to the diagram after some time t so the chain which is left on the table So some some part of the chain has fallen on the table, and because the table is like a flat surface, so every fallen part of the chain is called a dead part or dead chain. Now, what is the meaning of dead chain? The chain which will fall on the flat surface bottom will not contribute in motion; it will just accumulate there, or it will make a heap. so it will be there only it will just like we you know we zigzag like this kept on the surface so what we are supposed to assume is that the entire chain is not in motion only the hanging part which is always fixed and the remaining part will be in motion so now to solve this question we need to assume some variables so if i assume that the okay that i'm telling now imagine that x length of the chain is already fallen now the fallen part is at rest it does not mean the remaining part are at rest they are in motion actually so the question is can we find the velocity of the chain the moving part as a function of x value the fallen part so v as a function of x can we do this yes okay all right so can we yes. assume that oh so many you can assume mass as n it doesn't matter you can take the mass as n but uh, if i'm so it's no, even asking what else so i was asking that uh, uh, can we assume that the chain the length of chain displaced from the top can as be x this ha that only yeah yes you can take you can take it doesn't matter sir so i will like yeah sir the displaced from uh, from the point uh, the height to the down we can take it as x right no that is h no so you can't take that as x it is h always the we are not going to take the chain leaving the table we are always considering that some part of the chain is on the table and some part has fallen and some part is always vertical so the question is when x length of the chain is already fallen on the bottom table a bottom surface then what is the speed of the remaining chain because once a part will fall on the bottom surface it will come to rest immediately so there is no question of their motion so they are not part of uh, <coughs> they are neither part of the driving force nor the part of driven moving like a uh, mass so they are part of nothing so this particular question at every instant the driving force and the due mass will have a definite relation can you think of that relation so will it be v is equal to uh, root under g by l multiplied by l minus h so okay, what is the driving force that under the driving force here
so always try to write the answer in terms of uh, driving force upon driven mass sir hmm. sir l is the whole law so length of the whole chain correct right. l is the whole chain So the driving force will be m by l into a h a right where a is Correct. acceleration h g h g m by l h g oh yeah sorry So let me do this now. So here the driving force is always constant because the hanging part is fixed. It's not changing with time. The first thing which you need to observe is that this part will never change unless the all of the chain is leaving the table. So that we are not considering. So here what we need to realize that the driving force is constant. But the driven mass is variable. And the driven mass we can write directly as of now by the formula lambda times the length which will move, which is L minus X. Because we know that X is a dead chain. X is fallen on the ground and it is at rest. So except the X value, all other will move. And now we know the formula that a driving force equals to or driving force is lambda h g equals to driven mass which is lambda l minus six into accession. And you can see the benefit of writing in terms of lambda it anyway gets cancelled out. So it will ease out the way of writing. So a turns out to be g h upon l minus six. And now comes the second part called kinematical equation, which you already know. So 
so what you can do here that the a turns out to be g h upon l minus x and we know we can write as v dv by dx so v dv turns out to be be g h d x upon l minus x and now you integrate from the beginning so in the beginning what was the value of x zero and this was velocity v but it's also zero this is also zero. when it is x we can say v so the v square by 2 turns out to be something new actually this time this is ln value this is ln l minus x with minus 1 From zero to x, the v square turns out to be two g h multiplied by the lower limit minus upper limit because minus will reverse the limit, and lower is zero l n l. So the v turns out to be in this case very nice expression, maybe a very bad expression depending on how you take it. ln of l upon oh, l upon l minus x so v is under root of 2g h ln l by l minus x so now this is the different answer from the previous answer and of course this is slightly more challenging problem for any beginner So can you show the previous page? Just a minute. Done. Okay. Now you can do one more problem as a homework. I'm leaving as a homework. If we have a pulley, which is fixed, This pulley is fixed, and now we have a chain which is passing over the pulley. So neglect the size of pulley. So pulley is like a dot. So the you can ignore the size of the pulley. This is the length hanging from both sides, and both the lengths you can take as l by two, l by two in the beginning. now if i pull one side by x value or not pull one side like i'm pulling it slightly and releasing so when one end is already fallen by x value then can you find the acceleration of this chain and also find the acceleration when all of the chain will come on, come on the one side we to keep on falling till the Entire part will come on this side. So you can say that when the chain will leave the pulley, and we are ignoring the size of pulley, so we ignore, or we take the radius as tending to zero. Now that is very important assumption. So if I give you the radius, then you cannot solve. So it will become a very difficult or challenging problem that we'll see later on. 
maybe in some other chapter. Okay. So the question is simple to you. So question is find the acceleration as a function of x first. So this is the first question. And second is find the velocity as a function of x. And assume you start from rest. So this is your homework. I'm not going to solve, you will solve. Okay. So now we will go to the next variety problem. So the next problem is called Monkey and monkey will go with what? Lean. Monkey always loves banana. So the problem is called monkey and banana problem. Very famous, but it is also very conceptual. So what is this monkey and banana problem? So as the legend goes by, if you just think of the... So we have a pulley attached to some ceiling or whatever. And now, from this pulley, in one side there is a rope hanging, and other side the banana. The Picasso drawing of banana, anyway, quite expensive drawing. The other side is the monkey. So, monkey is an integral part of uh, SC Verma problem. Like, you cannot think of a problem without monkey. So, you have to master drawing the monkey. Okay, I have mastered it. As you can see, Now this, the monkey, this is a small kid and he is very much interested to eat banana. So now the rule is that he can only eat banana when the level of monkey and the banana comes to the same level. So when they will be in the same level, uh, he can eat. Now. And imagine the pulley is at infinite height. So monkey will never reach the pulley by pulling the rope all the time. Okay, so now this is the question. Now, what is the interesting part? The monkey and the banana having same mass. 
Oh, that's that's the problem actually. So if you look at the ABD of the situation, <coughs> gravity will pull the monkey. MG. And so the banana with this exactly same force on both sides. So the system is always at rest if nothing is happening. So now monkey decided to go climb the rope to come here. So now you see, you see the what monkey is trying to do. And you can also understand. So what is the interest of monkey to reach here in front of the banana? As per the condition, if he will do so, okay, you also know. If he can do so, which I'm believing that he won't. So this monkey will be very happy. The question is, will this will happen? Yes or no? Is it possible for monkey to climb and come in front of the banana? Is it possible? Is it possible? No, sir. So why it is not possible? So because the opposite mass in the uh, the banana is equal to the mass of uh, the monkey. So, sir, if we will try to <coughs> climb up, then the banana uh, will also move uh, with the acceleration of uh, what the monkey is pulling the rope downwards uh, in Correct. the above direction. Very good. So now the simple rule is for monkey to climb up the tension developed must be more than gravity but whatever tension he will develop the same tension like on the banana so because the force even if it is not balanced it will accelerate both monkey and the banana with the same acceleration a so the moment the monkey will try to climb, then definitely T will grow because you are trying to pull the rope, rope will pull you faster I mean, by greater force or faster. So when T is more than mg, the monkey will accept with T minus mg equals to m into a. But at the same time, even the banana will also accelerate up. So their separation limits maintained. So the monkey will never reach the banana. Okay. So this is the monkey problem. Now the other problem is, so what would be the solution for a, a monkey having banana? Monkey will never get the banana. That's the solution. And the only solution is the weight, the mass must be less for the monkey and more for the banana. If the mass of monkey is more than uh, sorry, less than banana, it can climb faster and then eventually you can catch. Yes, sir. Now, the other question is the so what will happen at top most point of the table if the monkey reach the risky climb? Yeah, what tell me what what is saying? So what will happen if the monkey reaches the topmost point of the tunnel? Yeah, if the monkey will reach the topmost point, then banana will reach before that because it is going to hit. So it is quite possible that the banana will come over the pulley and both will free fall. <laughs> now that's dangerous. And if the pulley is at very big height, then they will get, I mean, the monkey will get injured. Okay, so what will happen is not our concern. I and mean, if it goes there anyway banana will be there and if you say that let's say so there is a friction or the banana get is stuck in the pulley then will he eat it yes of course he will eat so we are not dealing with those things which is uh, like uh, uh, okay not part of puzzle so what we are discussing is something the puzzle which follows the laws of motion anyway now there is something called risky climbing or maybe you can say falling. So now we have a pulley and <clears throat> the pulley is attached to some mass here. Okay. 
and the, ma <coughs> the mass of the system block is capital. On the other side, on the other side, there is a man. And this man is holding the <coughs> rope and his mass is also. Okay. Now the rule is if P becomes Mg, the rope will break. Okay. Well, let's change, change this question. If P equals to 3 mg by 2, rope will break. We will take both cases. So now, right now you can see, it's just like a monkey problem. Now, how fast the man can climb the rope? How fast means, what is the maximum acceleration with which he can climb the rope without breaking the rope? find the <coughs> maximum acceleration of man with respect to rope such that the rope never breaks. Yeah, go ahead and try this question. So while climbing, the rope will move down, no? Yeah, right. So that's why I asked the question, the accession with respect to the rope, not ground. So you have to be very careful in putting the variables in the, into the right direction. So it's a very easy and very difficult problem at the same time, depending on whether you realize the relative motion or not.
Surat Bogam Sunan Tell me, tell me. It's a funny script. Hmm? So I'm on the final script. Okay. Good. Sir, is it G by 2? G by 2. Okay, maybe. I don't know. Let me check. So what I did was the maximum tension could be 3 mg by 2. So Perfect. acceleration is upward. So T minus mg is equal to MA and then I'm going to sum that. T minus T minus mg equals to MA. That is for which uh, block? Okay, that is for both, right? Man and the block, right? Yes. But that will be in which frame? Ground frame or... Uh, this will be nothing ground right so the question is what is the acceleration of the man with respect to the rope to do so Okay, anyway, what is the accession coming? G by 2. So the accession coming is if you draw the ABD of the block, you can get the answer directly. It's uh, T, this is mg. So T minus mg equals to mass into acceleration. Let's put it A naught. Or maybe A. So T is 3 mg by 2 minus mg. Is mg. So what is A here? G by two. Now this is the accession of the block upward. So the rope will also go down downward with G by two. But a man is going upward with accession G by two in the ground frame. So what is the accession of the man in the rope frame? A man minus A rope zero. So the axis of man is G by 2 J cap and axis of rope is G by 2 minus J cap because the rope is going down. The answer tends to, tends, tends to be G J cap upward. In the rope frame, the man is accelerating up with the acceleration G. You see that? Understood? Yes. Is this clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. So similarly, there are situations in which we need to solve the question of uh, falling, the risky falling problem. Like if the tension is certain value, it will break. So we need to even go beyond that. Right? So so can you show the imagine a situation yes. like <clears throat> these are called the puzzle problems, like not difficult one, but these are puzzles. In laws of motion, we have many puzzle so, problems, like which are very why easy. the rope will yes. go down with G by two. The rope will go down because the block is going up, so if this will go up, if the block okay. will go up, block is going up. Okay. Yeah, so the rope will go down, isn't it? So I am talking about the rope in front of the man <coughs> that is going down, right? And you have found the axis in the ground frame, not in the bottom in uh, rope frame. <coughs> so in the rope frame, he is going even faster, isn't it? Yes, sir. So that is why the answer is G, J, cap. So when you get confused, then write the uh, vector form. Take the up as positive, down as negative. So in fact, I have done completely vector notation so that you can understand that why we learned the relative motion. So 
it was not meant for the kinematics in fact every chapter that we are going to add to your knowledge is going to be used extensively in the coming chapters in fact the number of questions which we solve now is actually less than the number of questions we solve on its application actually anyway so let's go to the next one so we are going to solve the question like uh, <coughs> this and uh, it is just a reverse of the previous situation so the question is so one side we have a block of north end and the side is a map and <coughs> now the question is if tension exceeds 3 mg by 4 it breaks or string breaks So if the tension will exceed the 3 mg by 4, it will break. So definitely, if the man is also at mass end, if the man is going to just stay there, what will happen? It will break for sure. So what the man does is, so he is, he knows the physics. Let's say the some physics. He starts sliding down. So he starts falling down. So the question is, why the minimum acceleration now why why i'm saying minimum because if you free fall tension becomes zero so that will prevent the from breaking but the question is what is the minimum acceleration which you need to find the minimum a for man to prevent the rupture of the now also you need to decide that whether should he climb up or go down what is it? so he should go down so that's so a mg uh, will be uh, greater than t uh, or t is less than m correct so how much the t should be the t we have fixed at 3 mg by 4 right the man is having mg and the tension developed will be always upward but because <clears throat> mg will exceed the tension it will fall down mg minus t equals to m into a and t is given to us a tends to be g by So this is the ground frame acceleration. So, in the frame of uh, what is the acceleration of man with respect to rope? Can you tell me the answer in vector form? <clears throat> so, what is this answer? Tell me. So. Yeah, what is answer? Tell me. Roots G by two. Pardon? G by, by the root of G by two. Yeah. Down and up. G by two J. So G by two plus minus J. Minus. Because this time the rope is going up. The rope is going up with axis in A, and man is going down with axis in A. So in the frame of rope, it is going double. 
twice of the value downwards. So it's a twice of g by four, which is g by four. Okay, anyway. So now you have seen these are very uh, typical problems which you will face in laws of motion. These are called puzzle problems. It's a very easy, but at the same time, bit conceptual. So you need to be good with the concepts in laws of motion. So do not solve questions blindly. You need to have some sense before you uh, write something. The next question, let me take the next question or the next variety question. So, what is my next variety? Hmm. Look at this. So have you solved this question before? Have you solved this before in the tutorial? No. Okay, so here C is the midpoint of rope BD. Now every rope is a heavy rope. So now let's say this is So we apply a force of 125 Newton. Question is find the tension force at C. In fact, not only at C. At A, B, C. A is this point, this is A. This is C. Okay, so do it quickly. It's a very easy problem, level zero problem. In fact, we are still doing the level zero problem because all are having similar pattern to solve. <laughs>
सर So what is the acceleration of the system? Because you can see that everything is going to move up <coughs> together. So they must have the same acceleration. So what we can say about the acceleration of the system? So you can take the entire mass as one single mass, which is <coughs> equals to, I think, uh, 7.5 kilogram. So so yeah. Yes, you can take the entire mass as 7.5 kilograms. And from there, you solve the question. So, what is the acceleration? 16.6 kilograms. So, upward force is uh, 125 newton. And the gravity will be pulled by the let's take GS10 for the simplicity. So the entire mass, if you look carefully, is how much? 7.5 into 10 which is 75 newton. And therefore, the accession is obvious. The net force is how much? 125 oh, minus 50. Added by 7.5. So this we can add as uh, 50 upon 75. 6, 6, 7. So 25, 3, and 25, 2 is 20 by 3. So let's keep it like this. Now, for every point which I'm asking, I'll just solve for one part. The rest you can think of the same way. The tension at A will do the job of the agent pulling all the weight below it. So T minus all the weight below it, which is 6.5 into G equals to 6.5 into A. That's it. And the TB you can write in the same fashion minus uh, 4.5 G equals to 4.5 and the TC is slightly uh, involved into just 12 well from the value which is 3 plus 3 by 4 3 plus 3 by 4 right 3 by 4 after the 3, by, 3 by 2 kg 3 by 4 is 0.75 so 3 by 4 plus 3 is how much uh, 15 by 3 right? So this is how you can solve the question like this. So it's very easy. You first find the acceleration and then you can force. So I think we have done enough problem of a variety where the, the acceleration is only one value, not two values. So every time we are solving the question, you can see that we are getting only one answer of acceleration, not the two answer of acceleration. So let me extend this to so the. Can you explain two? that tension C1? Which one? Which one? Tension at C. So at C, <laughs> you have to cut from here. Now, whatever tension will develop at C will pull how much mass? Everything below it. Three. So, what is the mass of the everything below it 3 plus half of 1.5 right the mass the below mass is how much 3, three, three can equal 1 by 2 or 3 by 2 so which is 3 plus 3 by 4 which is 15 by 4 okay so now there are two more variables that is the problem that you will come across uh, in which there is only one acceleration And you can solve it without I mean, some other concept, the basic motion. So the two more varieties that we need to be aware of, it's called uh, 
problems based on spring balance and the weighing machine. So first of all, what is the meaning of weight as per physics and the weight you understand or your brain so understand? Weight is the force with which uh, or pulls any Very good. Correct. So weight, when I say the weight, so it is always the gravitational pull. So now there is something called the weight that human perceive and we preferably call it apparent weight. So this is the weight as perceived by human brain. So the sense of weight, it comes through some other contact forces. For example, when you stand on a floor, then it is the normal on your foot, which gives you the sense of your weight. So by any means, if I decrease that normal, you will start feeling less or by any means, if I increase your normal, you will start feeling heavier. Similarly, we can do it in the other way. Let's say you hang from a rope. So you're holding the rope and trying to stay stationary. So your palm and the rope will create some frictional forces. And that friction will develop a tension in the rope. So the force between your hand and the rope is definitely friction because you cannot hang from a frictionless rope. If I give you a iron rod which is properly greased, so it is lubricated and if I tell you, can you hold yourself on that rod? So you can understand its importance. So you will fall freely. So the idea is the apparent weight is some sort of contact that a body receives. Now the question is why we do not feel the weight? So the weight of a person is something which we experience from the time we are born. And therefore, something which is our brain is conditioned to, we do not feel. Let's say do you feel the atmospheric pressure? The answer is no. You don't feel because the atmosphere is applying force the day you came to existence in this world. And the force of the atmosphere itself is the weight of two baby elephants. Imagine how strong every human being is that every human being is at least capable of holding that uh, two elephants, weight of the two elephants. Now that is a structure of the human body to tolerate since childhood. So we never feel the, the force which we are experiencing since our childhood. So what we experience is called the force beyond that value. So the weight and the normal, I mean weight and the atmospheric pressure are the two forces which we never feel because it is happening till the time we were born. Now the contact force will give you the sense of your weight. So let's say you're standing on the floor and you're trying to hold some 10 kg dumbbell in your hand. Now today you will feel heavier. The reason is you're pushing the ground more than you were pushing before without the dumbbells you can see. So whenever the normal will increase, you say you're feeling more weight. So your apparent weight will grow. But 
in situation let's say you are standing in an elevator and the elevator suddenly goes down for a very brief moment the elevator will accelerate downward and that will decrease the normal by significant value and so that change you can feel you can feel slightly lighter because the new normal which you are experiencing is happening for the first time and brain is very quick at differentiating the changes surrounding the human body so the moment the context force will change even a bit the brain will tell you that something has changed or when something hits you the brain will tell you that okay you are you are being hit by something and uh, that comes with the concept of pain so pain is the essential part of the human existence we need pain to understand certain phenomena else it's very dangerous someone will cut your hand you will not feel a pain you don't know whether you are reaching at home without your hand <clears throat> quite possible so the we need to differentiate the two things weight and apparent weight and we also need to understand that weight is something we never experience so what we experience is called the apparent weight and that through the some contact force so the weighing machine or the spring force or sorry spring balance they work on the concept of contact force so although we call it weighing machine but it has nothing to do with the weight so what it measures is called the normal reaction and similarly spring balance has nothing to do with the weight because what it measures is the tension force developed the two things called spring balance and weighing machine are ways to measure the normal and tension but not the weight now in some situation the measurement turns out to be same as weight but in some other situation it may turn out to be something different so we need to be well trained about the two differences like we need to know that what the meaning of this weighing machine weight or weight as we measure on the spring balance okay so our spring balance of weighing machines are going to be massless object so their mass will be always negligible so these are some very you can say indirect note which i'll just make it direct all weighing machine or spring balance all weighing machine and spring balance are massless object and now what they do is very simple so spring balance spring balance only measures the tension develop and the weighing machine okay it's short let me add one machine only measure the normal reaction okay <clears throat> now we calibrate these devices to measure mass so we something for the reading so, so although they measure the weight normal reaction so no or that can after tension what to do develop now there is something called the reading of the device so what they read so although 
what they measure is the weight but we need the weight is called okay the name to to be thing can be either normal upon g for wing or tail upon g for spring Reading the reference to these two things. In fact, let me write it separately. For Okay. So now, with the two simple concept, you can solve the rest of the problem. Sir, I want to note the last page, previous page. Noted, sir. Imagine we have an elevator, and from the ceiling of the elevator, we attach something called weighing machine. Ah, uh, sorry, spring balance. The spring balance, and it comes with some calibration. And you can read it, whatever it is. Now it is suspended with some hook. So let me not show the hook, and then you suspend the mass which you are trying to measure. So the moment you suspend, gravity will pull it, and the tension will develop here. So let's call it T. Now the spring has nothing to do with the mg because the mg is acting on the block, not on the I mean spring balance. So the tension developed will be the reading of the spring balance. So now, if the elevator is at rest, let's say if the system is not accelerating up or down, I can say clearly that T must be equal to mg. Yes, sir. So the reading, reading we define as T by G. So this turns out to be um, this is called the true reading. So the which uh, this reading is not shown on the spring balance. No, you will not get the T. You will get the T by G value as written on the calibrated scale. So what we write is what you read, not what the spring measures, right? So what you you read on the spring balance? What is written there? Let's say your weight is fifty kg and I write five on. So what is five representing? Your mass, which is correspond to the weight of fifty newton. So mass is something different, and weight is something different. Weight is mass into g, right? Yes. Sir. So the calibration, the 
calibration is done in order to prevent this uh, uh, the reading ambiguity. So what you read is mass. That's why reading refers to only mass, and we that's why we divide the tension by the g value. Now this is called the true reading. The reason why we are calling true reading because the system is not accepting. It's called inertial system. So now if you take the same situation and if you take the case that case one, if elevator it starts ascending with an acceleration A naught or you can say A. So in this case, if the system will have the upward acceleration A, then the, you cannot write this equation as a log of motion. So what do you write? You write T minus mg. T minus mg is equal to mg. Because the block is going up with acceleration A. And so the tension turns out to be M into A plus G. So the reading will be T by G as usual. It should turn out to be M into, let's write 1 plus A by G. And just I will do this. So the reading, the new reading is called R dash is more than R, right? So when the elevator will accelerate up, then of course tension will be more than gravity. And so the reading is spring balance will show you more reading. And the case two can take as when the axis is downward. And let's say A is down, but not G minus G2. So you can write mg minus t equals to m into a so t equals to m into g minus a so reading double dash equals to t by g turns out to be m into 1 minus a by which is less than r well so in fact in the second case and the first case the reading will change further now the same thing we do for the weighing machine so i'm not writing that equation because you can just replace the T by normal reaction and you find the normal value. And then you can say the reading is equals to N by G. And similar thing will come into picture. Understood? Yes. So what you need to remember is that uh, all springs are massless and for every massless spring, what it measures or gives you the answer is the tension, not other values. So, yes. sir, if spring balance is attached to two blocks of different masses, then what will it show? It will measure tension, that's it. So, no matter. No matter what you do, the tension in the connected spring will matter. For example, if you have a spring balance attached to some ceiling, and then you attach some mass here, you attach some mass here. What do you want to do next? Sir, no, like on a table side by side. It is the two masses are high. So what you're asking is the AC or problem, right? Yes, sir. It was even in the CR, yeah, sir. Same question. Sir, but it okay. was uh, given mass. It was, same it mass. Give you the tension. So what, what is the tension in this thing? If it is M1 and if it is M2, so you should not bother about the mass, you should bother about the tension. So we know T is how much. So the tension is 2m1 m2g upon m plus m to solve m1 plus m2. Because this will act as a massless, and what we need to remember that whenever we have a massless object connected between the two strings, the tension will be same here and here. That is the reason of we take massless. So whatever mass you may suspend, the tension will not change. The tension remains same on both sides. That is the basic concept. And therefore, you are going to measure this value. So the reading will be how much? 
टी वाय जी डिस्टेंस आता तो टू म्यू दैट्स फिर हमारे तो म्यू मिलेगा राइट म्यू इज़ व्हाट यस सर प्रोडक्ट ऑफ मास अपॉन समेशन कॉल्ड रिड्यूस्ड मास सो नो मैटर व्हाट द मेजरमेंट विल गिव यू द टेंशन एंड इफ वी अटैच टू स्ट्रिंग on the two sides of a string the tension will never change because of the spring the reason is our spring is a massless object and we know that imagine we have a massless object something called massless or mass less and we said tension t1 here to be let's say it's going this way with some axis on a so what will write the log function for this object t2 minus t1 equals to mass less into a And what is mass plus into a? Zero. A. Oh, sorry, zero. So T one turns out to be T one. T two is turns out T one, right? So both the tension turns out to be same. And that is the rule for every massless object. So in case of massless object, the tension never varies across it. Okay. Understood. Understood. Okay. So now, uh, similarly, can solve the question of uh, what we called weighing machine. The only difference is the we draw the ABD. That's it. So now we have a weighing machine which is at the foot of the. Elevator, which shows the reading. Okay, and then a man, a person is standing here. Now this guy is standing, or maybe sitting, or kneeling down, whatever it is. The idea is, if you do the ABD, you can just replace the man by the some object, some block you can think of. You can apply the normal on the man upwards, so that's actually normal. It will do something like that. And gravity will act on it, right? so we have the normal we have the gravity okay it's very angry young man you know the gravity is down normal is acting because of the the contact force let me show it and write maybe it is that Sir, elevator is at rest of going. Pardon? Elevator is at rest of. Yeah, that you can take the cases. That's why I'm not doing it. So now you can take the cases. If the elevator is not moving, there any question? So the first case is let's say a equals to zero. When the elevator is at rest, so definitely what it will give you the reading is the true reading. So we can say r equals to n by g, which is just now you can take the case two when it is going up. So to go up, the normal must be more than gravity, isn't it? So to accelerate the elevator up, the normal must be more than mg, and so the answer will be more than gravity, and mass will be more than the rating will be more than m. So in the same fashion, you can do it for other cases like the elevator is going down and so on. So what you will realize that every question turns out to be very simple. so what we need to understand or realize is that if if i mention that the reading of a weighing machine is 2 kg 
Now, if you know the reading is two kilogram, you can directly say that the normal is two g. It does not mean you can say mass is two g. You can only one thing you can say is normal is two g into g two g. So reading only gives you the normal or the tension depending on the device which you are using the string balance or the ring machine. So now when you come across questions like this, in which uh, we have an elevator, elevator, and you can also create questions like this, like one question is from SC Verma itself, in which uh, very simple questions like the the weighing machine itself, is, the spring balance is hanging from the ceiling, and then you connect a pulley from the spring balance. And uh, now we have a block here. So we have two masses here. And let's say the elevator is going up. Let's take one particular case to solve the question. The question is what is the what is the reading of the string balance? What is the reading? So what it will read is this. Tension in the connecting parts. And if I know this answer, then I can solve this question. So you can solve this question after some time when you learn something more in the level two problem. So here the thing is, if you want to solve this question, you have to just replace in the elevator frame. We can write m two g replaced by m two g plus it. What we do is we just replace g by g plus a to solve this question. And uh, if you remember the form of tension, it was uh, not piston. This is the T dash. The tension in the string we know is two mu g. So now we are two mu g plus it, plus it. one small change. And then we know T dash is how much? It's two t. It turns out to be four mu g plus a, and therefore the reading will be four T dash by g actually. So four into the product of mass upon summation of mass into one plus a by g. You can see that this is the answer. Now every complex question, of course, this is I haven't taught you how to get the g plus a thing, but every complex question you can solve if you know the basic definition. So we know what a uh, spring measures. It measures the tension. So now you have to think about how without worrying about the question. So you just solve the question and get the tension. And once you are done with the tension, you can get the answer. So that is the approach we have to apply. Okay. So now with this question, I will end up the the journey of a level one problem where everything is moves with only one value of acceleration. So now we are going to deal with a different variety of problem wherein the acceleration. Will not have the same numerical value. So now every moving part of the system will have. And now you are supposed to solve. So, so are we writing something? No. Sir, uh, sir, please will you share the last year? Uh, sorry, last year, last lectures PDF. I think I have shared the last lecture, isn't it? I haven't shared. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Was it some? Uh, I think there was some issue. So of, you uh, shared it. So you shared it. It's there. I, I have shared, no? 
I think last HR shit are just after the class itself. If you go back and check, it is there. Yeah. You can see. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Okay. Sir, I thought you uh, sir, did the day before yesterday's lecture. No, I think the last lecture I have shared, and now this is the next lecture. Okay. Now the good thing, uh, good news is that we are done with the the fundamental, the the way. way and it only constitutes a very uh, a small part of it, although significant. But this is not is the exhaustive list of problems which we need to know. So now we are going to tackle those problems in which the toughest ch challenge will be finding the relationship of acceleration among all the moving parts of the system. And once you do so, then. Once we do so, then it is a very simple problem of logarithm. So now we are going to learn something called the constraint relation. So before we, I mean, before, before I give you some numerical questions on this, first we'll try to understand the fundamental of constraint. So now, what is the meaning of constraint? For example, let's say, if you want to get enrolled in a college, then depending on the income of a family, you have a budget constraint. So you decide what to choose, not to choose, depending on your budget. Or let's say if you want to buy some clothes for you, so you always go for some budget. So you know that I have to buy in this particular range of you know, product. Now, if the product is really costly, maybe if it is costing you 20,000 for one t-shirt, then probably as a middle class, we will not buy. So we always are having some sort of constraint, constraint like in the real life, we call the budget as a constraint. So the constraint is like it restricts your movement in one way or the other. So probably you will not go to the section which is very expensive because that is not your budget. So you say there is a constraint of budget, so I will not go in there. Now, constraint can come in various ways. So let's say if you want to get into Indian Army, you know, there are some prerequisites that you must have this much height, so and so. You must have the chest size of this. You must run these many kilometers in these many seconds or minutes. Now, again, these things are called the constraint, and those who fit the constraint can apply or will be eligible to go ahead with the process of selection. So the idea is in everything, which is the integral part of human life. So now in the laws of motion, if we talk about the constraint, then it refers to some sort of uh, selection, like uh, what we can do and what we cannot do. So you can say, the bodies which having some sort of constant relation cannot move independently. So they will have some sort of relation. In other way, you can actually guess in advance that how much will be the, or what will be the exact relationship of their displacements. You can guess the relationship of their velocities. And in some sense, also you can guess the relationship between their acceleration. <laughs> so the constant is the relationship between the variables associated with the motion of objects. And there are just three variables that we associate for the motion of objects. One is called displacement. If you differentiate it, you can also call velocity. And if you again differentiate, you can also call acceleration. So we are going to learn about the constant of these three varieties, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Now acceleration is not the fundamental motion. Acceleration is of course the cause of motion. But when I say motion, it is the velocity which determines everything else. 
so accession never gives you the idea whether the bodies are in motion or not it only gives you the idea that it will move or it will change the velocity so now our focus will be mostly on the displacement and velocity and from that relation we'll try to enter the acceleration relation and why i'm saying is from there to acceleration because writing the constant relation directly for acceleration will be a blunder in some situation although those situations are very less and rare which will come across but it is good to know that it is not always going to be true i will give you the demonstration like when it is not true in fact if we are going to solve such questions as well so now coming back to the constant relation or constant concept constant always refers to the dependent motion of connected bodies so there is simple definition dependent motion of connected bodies is called constant so now one thing is sure that constant is only due to the contact forces because connected bodies means they must be applying some sort of constant force on each other so when you say the bodies are in contact you say the bodies are in contact when there is a contact force between them that's simple so when you stand on the ground is there any contact force with the human and the ground yes sir normal which force is the contact it is a normal reaction right yes now there is something very fundamental which you never realize so when you walk on the floor let's say your building is a multi story building you are on some higher floor so when you walk on the floor can you go inside the floor no sir no you can only walk on the surface on the floor right now the question is if i ask you what prevents you to go inside so the equal reaction you will just simply say tension uh, normal reaction sorry so the your answer is it is a normal which is preventing me to go from uh, surface to inside right yes so normal is a contact force which is preventing you to go inside or downward or perpendicular to the surface so what we say that it is the normal which is behaving as a constraint for the motion to take place in certain way not in the way we want so normal is called the constraint force in physics why because it always prevents the motion so in which direction it prevents the motion can you guess straight down your direction it prevents the motion right so it always prevents the motion in the direction in which the force is acting called the normal reaction all right so now the normal is the first constant force that we come across then let's talk about some other constant force that we need to know about so the other force is actually there only and that is called the static friction so when you walk on the floor you must have realized that your foot when it makes contact with the ground it remains there only it will not slip or let's say if your foot is not slipping on the floor while walking then which force is preventing that slip so which force is responsible do not come I mean, in friction friction. and then which friction i would say the static or the kinetic so if you are standing no if you are walking so kinetic so static because sir we are not rubbing the surface correct so even if you are walking or running the friction force acting between your foot and the ground is always static we have discussed this in detail yes so it is a static friction which is preventing the relative 
motion of your foot with the ground now every force which prevents the relative motion we call it constant force because constant. it is some it is some sort of constant to your motion because when you are pushing the ground backward it is not letting your foot to go backward and it is preventing that relative motion so this force is a constant force now the third force is very interesting called the tension now generally it is believed or assumed in the question that if we have two or more than two blocks connected with a string and the condition is that they are supposed to move keeping the string taut always like the condition is we have multiple blocks a group of blocks all are interconnected by one string or maybe multiple strings and the question is they must move in certain way to keep the string always taut so you are not supposed to make it loose so if one of the block will try to lose it the other must move in such a way to compensate for that loss like if you trying to shrink the string then some other motion will pull the string and keep the string always taut now this is some sort of constraint you can think of a simple example let's say i give you a piece of rope and just two friends are holding that rope so let's say two person is holding the rope and the rule is the rope must be always taut now if i tell you run and make sure that do not lose the rope so now that will take away the freedom to run isn't it are getting a point what i'm saying if i'm saying that let's say there is a rope and the two ends of the rope is hold i mean are i mean are held by individual person and now i say run and then i put a condition that you have to run in such a way that at no point of your motion the tension becomes zero it must be taut all the time taut now what does it mean taut means tight like you say in the normal english tight so taut is a technical word which means non zero tension t a u t it's not taut it's taut so it's a very small uh, the cell level taut is different from the tau gs is the tau or the taut okay with more stress and it is not the tight word because tight comes in case of other situation also let's say your shirt is very tight or maybe uh, the the space is very tight compact so the tight is a different notion what we use here is called the taut ta ut maybe the first time you are listening to this word and that is why all the confusion so when we have let's say two person holding one rope and i am telling them to move in such a way to keep the rope always taut then can you move with your freedom the way you want or you must move in certain way to keep the tension non zero So, so your motion, is, yeah. So your motion is your motion is prevented to be random. So motion must be in some particular fashion, some particular way. And the moment I give you this constraint, your motion becomes dependent. Your velocity becomes dependent. So if I move in certain way, then you have to follow the other way to make sure that tension is non-zero. and that's why we call it constraint force so there are just three forces in physics we are going to treat as constraint force the static friction keep in mind that kinetic is not the constant because kinetic allows you to move relatively so that that will that will not prevent the motion so the first force which is constant we call it normal and it's good that it is there the second is called the friction the static friction and the third is called the normal
uh, so tension. Now these three forces, which we have just learned about in the category of constant, you are only supposed to write the equation for the tension and the normal because for static friction, the constant force is so obvious that there is no need to write the equation because if two surfaces are in contact and not moving relatively, then we can only say that they must have same velocity. That's simple. So the constant is very simple. In case of uh, normal, things will change. And in case of tension, it will change even more dramatically. Now, in some say, case, you will be able to see it by mere inspection. But as the situation becomes complex, we need to develop some method to get it. So our next lecture is going to be the learning of those methods, which can always give us the constant relation, some sort of mathematical equation, which relates the displacement, velocity, or acceleration. So that is the, going to be the next lecture motivation. This is what we are going to deal with. And from there, we'll enter the level two problems. So I hope this is clear to all of you. Like not exactly clear mathematically, but we have got one idea that there is something in the nature called constraint force. So the idea was to introduce you to the notion of constraint force. Okay. So rest we'll do in the next lecture. Till then, yes. goodbye and take. Sir, we have to practice from HCV only. Pardon? We have to practice from HC Verma book or are you going to send any questions? You know, I think uh, I have shared the laws of motion booklet, right? Yeah. Yes. So that is a very good book you can uh, solve from there because that will have all questions of S Okay, so. This is a very integral part to solve the other variety of problem. You just need to wait for some time, you will be able to solve.